What's up, Resolve students? We are so glad that you're back with us for part three of our Summer Philippians series. Um, I know our high school just got back from uh, Passion Camp and I heard tons of great things about everything there as far as it was a lot of fun and um, we also got to see the Lord move in the lives of so many of you guys in different ways and that was fantastic. I hope you enjoy this, um, this week off in between because next week we're going to Mix Camp with all of our middle school students. I'm so excited about what a blast we're gonna have then. But for now, let's jump right back into our study of Philippians. Last week, Bradley was talking about how in good situations and in bad situations, we can always look to how Jesus is our top priority. And that gave Paul a totally different perspective um, on how to handle the situations in his life, and he's passing that on to the Philippians. And then in the passage we're going to look at today, we're going to see an overview of how that is practically applied. So open up your Bible. We're going to be in Philippians, obviously. If you haven't caught on to that by now, I'm letting you know we're in Philippians chapter 1. And we're going to finish up the chapter at verse 27. We're going to read verses 27 through 30. So if you need to pause real quick to get to your Bible, do that. But that's where we're going. Philippians 1, 27 says this. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you, standing firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that uh, that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him since you are going through the same struggle um, you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. So a couple of things here that are going on. Number one, Paul is letting us know right there at the end that the Philippians are having a hard time of it just like he is. Paul is in prison at this point for preaching the gospel, and he's writing this from prison. That's a big part of why when Bradley was talking about last week, is how we can make Jesus our number one priority in good situations and in bad situations. So as he's writing to the Philippians and encouraging them, saying, hey, if you're in, you're in kind of a rough position too, but let me give you a couple things that I want you to hold on to. And the first one is this. In verse 27, he says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And I love that because uh, my favorite thing about Paul is that he's super practical. And this is the practical version of saying, don't be an idiot. And whatever's going on, Live your, live your life in a way that's worthy of the gospel of Christ. Don't go off doing stupid stuff. Pause and think, okay, what would be the thing that would glorify God in this moment? Another way to think about it is what is something that would make the name of Jesus have more respect, more authority, more honor in the eyes of those around me? How can I glorify God in this situation? And this can be in good situations, in bad situations. This can be in big decisions, and this can be in small decisions. Um, and this is, this is kind of a generalized statement. Later in the book, he goes on to what some of those good decisions look like, what some of those good traits are. But right now, he's just giving us something really quick and easy to hold on to of whatever decision you're making, whatever situation you're in, conduct yourself in a way that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. I love this. This is an easy filter to think through when I'm making quick snap decisions of how I'm going to treat somebody or how I'm going to handle a situation in my life and say, does this bring more glory to God? Does this make Christ's name even better and more significant in the eyes of people around me? So then the second thing he goes on to say is he says that we will have a unity and a confidence as we work towards Jesus together. Right. That's, why he, that's what he means when he says that he knows, when he's writing to Philippians, he knows that you, the Philippians in this case, but also to us, can stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man. The, the, another translation says striving together, fighting together, working together. It says contending as one man for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. And so he says, first of all, in your personal life, make good decisions. Make decisions that glorify the Lord. And then as you're going forward together, be in that Christian community that they are going to build you up. They're going to strengthen you. And together, in unity, as you're all working towards this goal of Christ-likeness, you can have a strength and confidence 
that comes first from the Lord and second from having a group of people who you belong with, who you think together. And what's really cool about this is he says, this is gonna speak to other people. This is gonna show the rest of the world that there is something different about us. There's something different about those Christians because they seem to be making the, na the name of Christ, this Christ they follow, more important than their own name. And they really seem to have a confidence and a unity and they do it all together. So I've got a couple of questions I want us to think through as we are going through this passage this week. Grab your buddy that you've been watching this with, uh, text your small group leader about it, and discuss these questions when you get together. The first one is this, what is the hardest area of your, in, of your life to live in a way that's worthy of the gospel? What is that area of your life where, you know, most other things, it's pretty easy to make decisions that glorify Jesus, but man, in that one or two areas, it's just not that easy. And it's a lot easier to get it wrong than it is to get it right. We all have those areas, but let's look at them and be honest and say, okay, maybe this area I'm not as, uh, I don't give God as much authority and control over that area as I should. And then the second question is a follow-up. What would it look like to give God authority in that area? So a really simple one I remember for me is growing up, I played music a lot of times and I played music in the church so I thought I was doing it for God. Um, but God kind of pressed on me that I was doing it for myself because I wanted people to think I was cool. I wanted people to think I was whatever. And, and one day he said, if I took away music from you, could you live with that? And the answer was no because my identity was not in building up the name of Christ, it was in building up my own name. And so when I gave God authority over that area of my life, everything changed. My attitude changed, my perspective changed, the way I prepared changed, because it wasn't about me anymore. Um, and I think we all have areas of our lives where we have to continually practice this idea of, I wanna make sure that in every area, God is getting the glory, Jesus is getting the glory. And if I'm, there's an area where I'm not doing that, Let's pray and say, hey, God, I want to give you that authority. And think about what that would look like. So that's your second question. What would it look like to give God authority in that area that can be difficult? And then the third thing is, the third question is this. How can you help grow unity in your Christian community as you all follow Jesus together? And I'm not going to give you a lot of answers on that. I want you to think about it. What are some of the things as a group, as a small group, or as your friend group that create unity? What are some things as we're discussing together and as we're living life together that create unity in our group? Um, as you're thinking about that, remember how important it is that we work for that unity because it's, it's in the way that we treat each other that the world knows that we follow Jesus. So that's it for today. I hope this uh, is a good food for thought for this week and helps motivate us, especially as our middle schoolers as we're going into camp, but also our high schoolers as we just came out of camp. I'm super excited for next week as we get into chapter two. Um, but that's it for today. Have an awesome summer.